Hey, this is René, welcome back to another video on this channel and today we'll make a quick tutorial for a time filter for MQL5 um, programs or MetaTrader 5 expert advisors. So this will be a really quick tutorial and it was requested several times, so let's start already. We are already in the MetaTrader 5, so the first thing we have to do if we want to program something is open the IDE here. And then once we open the IDE, we can create a new expert advisor that we will use for this. So we can say something like time filter demo because this will be just a demonstration. <clears throat> Click next, next and finish and you will find a new expert advisor created. You can also find it of course here in the navigator now, time filter demo is there. So we will erase all the gray lines and the properties because they do not have any influence on the program at all and I just want to show you like this one thing. Also make sure, um, if you want to see more programming content or if you like the channel in general, make sure to subscribe and also leave a like because it really helps me and it just makes me happy. So, <clears throat> now we have three functions left and we will create the time filter in the on tick function of course because we want to calculate it on every single tick to see if the time filter is fulfilled or not. Usually if I create a time filter I create several input variables for this and I make them integer inputs. You could also use string uh, inputs. Maybe we start with a string input um, because this is easier for a lot of people but the integer makes more sense in the long run and I will explain why in a second. So you can write something like this, input string, I can make this a little bit bigger, uh, time end. So we will have a starting time and a end time pretty much, like this. And um, yeah, these are two input variables, which means if we compile the program, and if we go to back to our MetaTrader 5, we will find the time filter demo in the navigator, and we can drag and drop it on a chart. And here we will now see the inputs, and these are uh, input variables, so we can also change them. So I could say 7, um, 10 like this, and I can click on OK, and it will now work with a 7, 10 instead of 7 o'clock. And um, yeah, also these are string inputs, so the user might be uh, able to put something like uh, this, oh wait, uh, this, which doesn't make sense, and it's your choice to handle these errors in the source code or to just make the user of the program responsible for adding only um, correct uh, time uh, data formats. So. Yeah, this would be uh, the time that we want to uh, use for a time filter. So let's go to our on tick function. And now uh, when we want to work with times, we cannot work with string variables, of course, but we will need daytime values. Daytime values, if we have a look at the documentation, the daytime type is um, used to store date and time. And it is just like the amount of seconds starting from January uh, the first 1970. So it's usually just a really big number. And how can we transform our string data to a date time uh, data type? So what we can do is we can create a new variable. Please um, realize that this one is written with a small letter and this one with a capital letter. So these variables are completely different for the computer. They have nothing in common. They are completely different variables because like the writing is different. And since MQL5 is case sensitive, this will make a big difference for the PC. So we can say something like string to time. And this is a function which is part of the MQL5 framework. So we can use it right away. And here we just provide our time start as a parameter. So this will take our time start and put it or transform it into this daytime variable. Of course, we will do the same thing for the ending time. So we say time uh, time end. And to have a little overview here, we can comment this in the chart. So we can do something like um, time start input and we say time start and then in a new line we can say time start uh, date time like this for example and we print time start and then we have time start uh, or oh, time end input time end and also we will print the time end daytime value time end 
like this. So if I do this and if I compile this, we should now see the information in the upper left corner of the chart. And you can see like the time start input is 7.10 and the date time is automatically transformed to the current day, which is the 21st uh, of November 2022 for me today. And the, 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 like the hours and the minutes are taken from this input. So what this string to time function does is it takes a string value and turns it into a date time. And it, the, the function is smart enough to realize if it is only a time provided or if there is also a day provided. So if we only have the time, the string to time function automatically assumes that we want this time for the current day. So now we have these two date time values and maybe you are wondering why this is not a big number as I said before. This is because it is automatically turned into a string in the comment function. But if we do so something like uh, like this and uh, cast uh, type cast it as a long, you can see now it's a really big number just. So um, yeah, this is how you can work with like date time uh, functions. So now let's get back to our time filter. The rest is really, really, really easy. So what we have to do is like, we can create a Boolean variable, for example, is time, and we say time current, which is the current time. So you can see here, this just returns the current or the last known server time. And this is also a date time value. So we can check if this is greater or equal the time start value. And we check if the time current is smaller than the time end value. And this is it. This is a time filter. So you can see if I now add this, uh, uh, like the is time variable here in the comment, we can already see that this should be working. And we can see the time filter is currently true. So in your program, you could now use this is time variable and check the value before you open a position. And if it is true, you can open the position. If it's false, uh, you just do not open the position. So yeah, writing a time filter is pretty much the easiest thing you can do. And if I choose a time, um, which is um, not valid or which would result into a false time filter, you can see it automatically adapts to the new situation and now the time filter is false. And yeah, I can do, I can type whatever I want here. I think the time to string function is smart enough to work with this, but you can see if I do something like this, which is not a valid string, it will pretty much not work because now you can see it just takes the, um, the, the current day for the, for the start time. And this doesn't really make sense. So this is the point where I want to show you like how you can work with integer inputs. And this has several advantages because if you work with these string values, you, you already saw the user is allowed to type in some stupid values that do not make sense. And to cover this or to make it harder for the user to break the program, you can use integer uh, inputs. Also, integer inputs are great when you want to optimize your program, when you want to optimize the time filter. Because in the optimizer of the MetaTrader 5, you cannot optimize string values because... Uh, I mean, there's no, no way to optimize a string value that can be anything. And this is why a integer value makes sense because integer values can be optimized. So um, what we can do here is instead of writing time start, we can write time start hour. And this is how I like to set up my time filter. And time start minute. And the minute could be anything from 0 to 60, of course, or to, to 59. And then we do the same thing, of course, for the end time. So we say time end hour and time end minute, right? So time end hour, time end minute. Uh, something like this. And also, like, if you want to learn more about um, MQL5 programming and if you want to have, like, in-depth knowledge and know um, and learn everything, like, from a beginner level to a more advanced level in a structured order, you can check out the link below this video and you will find a link to my website where I also um, have more information on, on a complete course that I created on, on MQL5 programming, which can really help you to write your own programs, even if you have if you do not have any programming knowledge so far. But let's get back to the program. Since I changed the input parameters here, the input variables, you can see if I compile, there are several errors. And this is, of course, happening because we can no longer work with this time start variable because it is no longer there. So what we have to do here is we cannot use this mechanism, but what we can do is we can say 
MQL date time and we can use a structure for the time. And this is um, a little bit new, I think, on this channel, but a structure is just a, mm, the, um, a, a way of handling data, just a data structure, pretty much. So you can see this structure, MQL date time, it can have or it, it, it stores all these values. So you will always have a year integer variable in the structure. You will have a month uh, integer variable. You will have a day, hour, minute, second, day of week and day of year integer variable in the structure. So how does this work? First of all, um, yeah, we can, for example, yeah, let's, let's um, delete some, some values here because we do not really need this anymore. And now let me comment this out for a second and we will have a look at the structure now. So you can see if I, whoops, this also doesn't work anymore. So what we can um, see here, if I print structure uh, time hour and for example, structure time minute and uh, structure time uh, day of week. If I print all these things, let's have a look what happens in the expert journal. Uh, you can see <clears throat> there are just some values that do not make sense. Like zero is currently for the for the hour. This big value is for the for the sec uh, minutes, and this is for the day of the week. So all of these values do not make sense, and this is because this structure is just empty pretty much or there are some random values in this structure right now. So what we have to do is to fill the structure with. Um, with the right data and the easiest way to do so is using the time current function because if I uh, start writing this time current function you can already see there are two options we used this uh, second one before where we do not have any parameter because it says void but we also have the first one where we have a reference to a mql date time structure and this is great because we have such a structure already so I can say struct time and if I do this it will fill the structure with the um, right values for the current time. So if I compile again, you can see now all of this makes sense. So the current hour is nine because this is like the server time here. The minute is um, 46 of the current server time and the day of the week is one because it is Monday. So this is how you can have access to all of the data in a MQL date time structure for the current time and day. And I would have access to like all of these values now for the current point of time. But um, of course, I do not want this point of time, but I need to calculate like the uh, the time start and the time end. So I will create my variables again. Uh, no, sorry. First of all, I say structure time. And now I can overwrite or change these values. I say for the hour, I want to have uh, time start hour. Then I have struct time... Um, minute and here I put start uh, time start minute and these are just the values that are inside of these input variables right so if I did this I am now overwriting like or I'm changing the hour and the minute variable in in this structure also before I do this I want to sh change the second input uh, or a variable here and I will just use zero. You could also create a third input for the second of course if you want to be like really accurate for your time filter but I think this usually is just too much optimization. So <clears throat> if I go like this and you can uh, see or if we just print this again struct time hour and then struct time minute and struct time um, maybe day of week, you can see like um, these values are now changed to the ones that I provided. So now we have 7, 10 and the day of week is still 1 because I didn't change this, right? So these variables inside of a structure, they are just normal variables. A structure is just like a bunch of variables that are put into a data structure. So now since I changed these values, I can now use a really cool function which is the uh, struct to time function, I think. So if we have a look at this, um, we first of all have to create our date time variable, time start, and now I use struct to time. And you can see this function returns a date time value, 
This is perfect because we need one. And it requires a date time uh, or a, a mQuery date time structure. And we also have this structure. So if we do it like this and compile, it will create the time. So if we see time start, if we print this time or this variable, you will see this is like our start time now. And this is really perfect because this is what we need. So we will just have to do like the same thing again for the end time. Um, start end hour here and here. And now, of course, we will create the time end variable and the rest can stay the same. So if we do it like this, and now we can, of course, use our time filter again because we created these variables again. And we also are able to have the comment here. Maybe uh, at the beginning we want the server time. Um, just like this. Just copy this comment. And if we have a look at this now, you can see everything is working again. We have the server time. Um, the time filter is currently true. And if I change the values um, to something that makes it false, it should also change to false. So you can see this is working just like before when we used the string inputs. And also in the source code, you can see like this um, method took us more lines to code. But still, in the end, I would always recommend for a program that you want to optimize, um, you should use like this method, like with the more input variables and integer input variables and not use the string um, version. Because if we have a look at the strategy tester here, um, wait, let me open this real quick. Um, you can see like if I want to do a optimization and if we use the um, uh, time filter demo program and if we have a look at the inputs, you can see I can use the optimization for this because I can provide a start, a step and a stop value. And this doesn't work for string inputs. You can try it, it will not work. So this is the way to go in my opinion. And yeah, this is it. This is a time filter and it is really easy to write a time filter in uh, MQL5. We do not even need the on init and the on um, delete function. So everything is uh, small and, uh, and, and clean here. And um, yeah, if you want to have a time filter in your program, you can just create these four input variables and copy uh, all of these lines here. And then you can just check the is time variable to check if the time filter is currently true or false. So this is it for a small time filter tutorial. Hope you liked it. Hope you can use it. And again, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more content on MQL5 programming and expert advisor trading in general. And also make sure to check out the website if you are interested in a complete course. And if you want to start writing your own expert advisors, use them for trading, use them to provide them uh, and sell them, for example, you can do whatever you want. Uh, MetaTrader programming is such a great and strong tool and it will make you a better trader in general. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you have a great time and good trades. Bye-bye.